Hello and welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I'm your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and today I've got a video for you on what to do when your Capricorn child withdraws or shuts down. So before we get into it and explain what I mean by this, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for your free regular Positive Parenting with Astrology content. So I'm going to describe this scenario to you and if you have a Capricorn person, child or adult uh, in your life, you likely will recognize this scene I'm about to describe. So maybe you want to communicate something that's very important to you and you start to become very animated about it. It could be something like constructive criticism for the Capricorn person or something else. You start to get very animated. You start to get heated. You're, you start to raise your voice. I don't want to say yell, but maybe raise your voice like above normal volume level. Uh, you may be, I don't know, making a lot of aggressive or apparently aggressive hand gestures like I do a lot. Uh, you may be pointing, you may be like swiping the air. And the more heated you get, the more the Capricorn person tends to like shut down and withdraw into themselves. They may get quieter, they may back up and they just shut down, meaning they don't respond to you. They stop interacting if they were interacting verbally or otherwise with you, and they kind of back away. And they may even leave the room. In short, the Capricorn person like, like clams up, stops talking. They may appear to like silently seethe, and they otherwise just shut down all interaction and communication. Now, most parents, when the kids, the Capricorn kids do that, most parents hate that. And most parents respond by saying something like, you know, don't walk away, I'm talking to you, or aren't you going to say anything, or don't you care? And this is a dynamic I see a lot when the parent is a fire sign parent and you have the Capricorn child. This dynamic is not only present when you have a fire sign parent and a Capricorn child, but I see it play out so often with those energies that I think it's worth mentioning. So first of all, you, the parent, I want you to think about a time when maybe you were on the receiving end of that, where someone was very either irritated with you or started to lose their you know, emotional control, started to lose their cool, maybe raise their voice. And did you feel good about that when you were on the receiving end of that? Or did you feel bad? Did you feel attacked or did you feel like the person was being passionate, explaining that their thoughts and their values, what was important to them? And if you're a fire sign, you may have taken that as them being passionate and committed to whatever topic you were talking about, or you may not have. So we're going to get into this, uh, this strategy that you, the parent can do when your Capricorn child shuts down because they tend to stop interacting with you because they feel attacked, verbally attacked, and they don't feel good. And we're going to talk about what you can do instead of that to maintain the connection with your Capricorn child and strengthen the relationship. I'm going to start by giving a very brief overview of Capricorn energy. It is an earth sign and a cardinal energy sign. Earth sign meaning it's uh, more concerned with stability, with maintaining things. Capricorn kids need a lot of stability and security in the household. They need to know what's coming next. They like predictability. They value that. They value resources. They're more resource oriented. Capricorn children, whether Capricorn sun or Capricorn moon, even Capricorn rising, tend to be very serious and they tend to be very comfortable taking on responsibilities, even adult level responsibilities, which we've talked about in other videos on Capricorn kids. So parents of Capricorn kids always have to be careful about the Capricorn child taking on too much responsibility, especially adult level responsibilities, which for a child are inappropriate. Capricorn likes to plan for the future and being a cardinal energy sign, it is intent on advancement moving forward. It doesn't like to stagnate. Capricorn is an energy that thinks a great deal before acting. It is a very calculating energy. It is not as impulsive as, for example, fire signs or Gemini energy can be. It is, a, it is an energy that compels the chart holder to consider something from all angles before making decisions. Capricorn is also a strong-willed and stoic sign. They don't, they, it's not the best at handling emotions. You can ask me how I know that. I have a Capricorn moon. It's not the greatest placement for your moon. It's not a super comfortable sign uh, dealing with emotions, especially uh, when you have Capricorn, a Capricorn moon as opposed to a Capricorn sun. 
So you may not always know what the Capricorn child is thinking, especially about feelings and emotions, because it's so difficult to just find the words to articulate those for the Capricorn. And a word to parents, if you, in the situation we described at the beginning of this video, if that is very triggering for you to have the Capricorn child kind of withdraw, shut down, be silent, you know, cease communicating and interacting, if that is very triggering for you, the parent, that is more the parent's issue from their own childhood and previous life, uh, previous life, previous to having kids, that is more the, the parent's issue to work on. It is not about changing the child's behavior. It is about changing the parent's behavior and the parent's outlook and the parent's mindset. So if you, the parent, are triggered in that situation by your child's withdrawing, you need to look at what you need to do, the healing work you need to do, and why it is so triggering for you. Okay. And if you need some help with that, I have a new uh, coaching program called Thriving After Trauma, which helps you deal with exactly those types of triggers. And you can find more information about that in the video description. So back to the strategy you want to follow, instead of doubling down and getting more animated and more emotionally expressive and raising your voice even more, you want to do this. First, think about it this way. When your Capricorn child acts like that, they are in their mind de-escalating the situation. First of all, it makes them very uncomfortable. Capricorn is a perfectionist energy. When they are reminded of their faults, they don't like it. It does not make them feel good. That's not to say that you cannot give them constructive criticism. You can, as long as it's you know, even keeled, even tempered, and you're coming at it more from a place of, I'd like to help you with this, not here's everything that you're doing wrong or here's everything that you're wrong, that's wrong about you, okay? So Capricorn holds themselves to an extremely high standard. Capricorn people typically have very high expectations from themselves, aware when they are reminded that they are failing at those high expectations, they feel terrible. They will not always express it to you, but they will feel bad. So they could be seeing the outburst as a reminder of their faults, which obviously for a child that's very uncomfortable and they're, they have a hard time telling the parent all that, why it makes them feel that way, okay? They need the parent's help to express that. And in their mind, also, like I said, they're kind of de-escalating the situation. They don't want you to get all, you know, uh, emotionally out of, out of whack. They don't want you to be emotionally overreactive. It doesn't, they don't feel good. They feel verbally attacked, so they're trying to de-escalate. And that's a dynamic I've had happen in my life several times. I would try to de-escalate by speaking more softly or just backing away and the other person would get madder and angrier because they thought I didn't care and I felt attacked. So you can see how this miscommunication just makes this situation worse. But bottom line, CAP kids don't like it when the parents are angry at them. They like to be seen as these responsible kids who can, you know, who are always, who are doing things right. So when the parents get angry at them, they feel very triggered. I mean, any kid doesn't like it when the parents get angry at them but certain energies can weather that way better. So for the Capricorn child, it's more of a survival mechanism. And I'm gonna tell you something I read a while ago, which was extremely enlightening. True empathy, 100% true pure empathy, is when you consider that everything the other person in the relationship does is for their own survival. When you think about it that way, when you think about the other person's behavior that way, you tend to automatically kind of calm down and have empathy for that person and sympathize with them because you're thinking it's for their survival. It's not because they're doing something to get back at me or they're doing something to irritate me or make me upset. It's for their own survival. That does not mean that you are obliged to put up with any bad behavior, okay? It's totally different. You can have your boundaries. You can accept somebody how they are and have your boundaries, right? You can accept someone how they are and refuse to allow them in your life because of your boundaries. That's different, okay? That's, that's something else. But that's what true empathy is. Everything the other person does is for their own survival. Whether you want to put up with their behavior is a completely different issue, okay? But that's helpful to think about, especially when you're kids, because kids just don't have the sophistication yet of adults and they don't have the impulse control yet of adults. So it is helpful to think in those terms that what they are doing is for their own survival. Now, kind of a variation of this, of this dynamic, uh, instead of the Capricorn kid withdrawing, 
sometimes they will remain very calm and say something very cutting, right? That it really irritates the parent. And I used to do that because my mother uh, is a Leo and would have these big outbursts and I would just remain very calm and say like something and, and it would be something kind of sarcastic or cutting and she would hate that. So one of the reasons kids do that is because children have generally have very little say or control over their lives and what happens to them. Parents usually tell them what to do. Not every kid gets age appropriate input in their lives, the activities that they like to do. Okay. So one of the ways that children can have control over things, and they do not usually do this consciously, this is a subconscious instinctual pattern. They, they say these irritating things to get a rise out of the adults. And you'll see this with Scorpio energy too. I have a Scorpio kid again, ask me how I know that. And they'll get the, they'll say these things, these cutting things to get a rise from the adults. And it, it makes them almost feel powerful because they're affecting the adults emotions. Again, they don't consciously do this. This isn't something instinctual. It's like, this is a way I can have control over my surroundings. I'm going to really, you know, irritate my parents right now. So this is a pattern that plays out psychologically. You have to get under a lot of like psychological layers to get to the bottom of it, but it, it does happen. So when the parent continues to overreact or raise their voice or you get even angrier, you're playing right into the kid's hands because the kid is, you know, subconsciously considering that, wow, I have control over this parent's behavior, right? So to diffuse that, you want to remain calm. The parent should remain calm and just, you know, if you have to kind of back away, and we're going to talk right now about how to do that. So I remember cap kids like stability. So when they feel like they don't have control over their lives or any say in what happens to them, they feel um, dis like emotionally dysregulated. They don't like that. That is extremely uncomfortable. And when that happens, they're more prone to do what we just described to kind of push the parents' buttons to kind of have control or uh, have an effect on the emotional outlook of the parent, right? Because that is a way for the cap kid to have some semblance of control, okay? okay? Now we're gonna get to the meat of what I wanna talk about. So what should you do? We talked about what the parent should not do. Don't continue to emotionally overreact. Don't continue to yell. Don't follow the Capricorn child around saying, hey, I'm talking to you. You better listen to me or else blah, blah, blah. Here's what you do. Here's one thing you can do. Do nothing. Say nothing. Stop talking, stop seething, take a deep breath. You can stay right where you are, say nothing and do nothing. Silence is incredibly powerful. People, a lot of people do not realize this, how powerful silence can be. So when you are silent, okay, and maybe you're just looking at your Capricorn child, maybe you can sum up a smile. You are giving the other person in the relationship, in the interaction space to say something, come forward, make a decision, something like that. You, instead of filling up the silence, you are kind of granting the other person in the interaction, the silence and the space to think about what to do next. And that's very powerful, especially with an energy like Capricorn, because they like to have control over themselves. They like to be in charge, right? They like to take responsibility. So this is in a sense is even easier for the parent because you're ceding a little bit of space and control to the Capricorn child and you're letting them have say in what happens next. And if you do that, I think you may be surprised at what happens next. I've tried this with my kid who is not a Capricorn, but it, it's interesting what happens. Sometimes things just work out exactly how the parent wanted because you've kind of given up the reins of control. And again, silence can be very powerful. And uh, not to bring up my program again, but in my coaching program, we cover a great deal on how to use silence to your advantage. And for parents, it's easier because when you're using silence to your advantage, you are doing less and you are expending less energy. So you have more energy for yourself and for your family. Another reason the silence is so powerful is because the child doesn't expect it. The child expects what's the usual pattern. The parent gets upset, the child withdraws, walks away, says something cutting, the, the parent follows them, the parent gets really irked, the parent says, 
look at me when you're talking, when I'm talking to you, I'm not done talking to you. Well, aren't you going to say something, blah, blah, blah. So if that's what's been happening, that's what the child expects. When you do something the child doesn't expect, they're more apt to pay attention to you. From a psychological standpoint, human beings pay attention to things that are different or unexpected. They pay attention to those things way more than to things that, you know, run-of-the-mill patterns that are expected. So the, just the using the silence is, and just not, you know, not following them, not speaking, is going to make the Capricorn child think, like, perk up and think, what's going on here? And they're going to pay more attention to you because it's unexpected. Then you can say something like, okay, you know what? I'm getting really worked up and we should talk about this when I'm calm. I'm going to go take a break and I think you should too. Then go do something you enjoy. Go work on something productive. If you have a lot of pent up energy, go take a walk, work on something productive. I do all those things uh, when I have the energy that I just I need to you know, get out because I'm worked up. So, so you disengaging, again, the kids usually don't expect that because a parent usually doubles down when it confronted with that behavior. But if you disengage and take yourself out of the situation, giving the child space, it's unexpected. So sometimes they may come to you and be like, hey, you know, I'm sorry, especially older kids. So we're talking about older kids who have a little more sophistication in dealing with these things than younger kids, like seven, eight, maybe 10 plus. So I think you may be surprised at the kid's reaction to that. You can even say, I'm sorry that I'm overreacting, but this is an area that's very triggering for me, or this is something that's very important to me, but I can tell that we're not super receptive. Both of us are not super receptive to this right now, or we're not in the frame of mind to talk about this right now. Let's take a break and we'll, we'll talk about this later. We'll regroup later and leave. And again, you leaving and creating the space is very powerful. Then later, when you're both calm, it could be later that day, maybe the next day. You don't want to leave it too long because then you know people forget about stuff. You can sit down with your Capricorn child and you can say, hey, I'm sorry I overreacted before. This is a very important issue for me. Here's why. I was not calm before. I am calm now and I'm ready to talk about this in a calm manner. And I would like to communicate that. You can say you hurt my feelings or I felt ignored or I felt this or frankly I'm overwhelmed I need your help with certain things you know I wanted you to take a screen break because the screen is tough on your eyes and you know for your own health you need to take a break once in a while not because I want you to take a break because for your health you need a break then for older kids you can tell them I have my own triggers I'm working on and I kind of projected some of those triggers onto you and I'm sorry I did that but now that I'm calm let's talk about this and then when you're both calm, you can have a productive conversation. But the thing is, when tempers are high and you're kind of emotionally dysregulated, and if you have somebody with ADHD in your life, uh, you will be very familiar with the emotional dysregulation. My point is, when you are emotionally dysregulated or dealing with someone who is emotionally dysregulated, you cannot reach them on a rational level, either because the other person is dysregulated and cannot be rational, or because you are dysregulated and you cannot be rational. So you have to wait till you are both calm to then have a logical, calm, rational discussion. Okay. So that's what these techniques are meant to help you do. And then when you have that calm conversation, whatever your kid brings up, listen to it calmly. And even if they say something that you don't think is accurate or you don't think is fair, or you don't think is correct, you can listen to them, let them say their piece, hear them out. Then you can say, well, I understand that's your point of view. My point of view is X. You don't have to tell them you're wrong and I'm right, or you're being untruthful or you're unfair. Maybe from their point of view, it looks like that. It's not that they're lying, right? You can tell them from my point of view, it looks like this. And then you can talk a rational, productive conversation. And there's a really good technique um, in a book, which is not a parenting book, which is actually a book that I recommend all the time on uh, hostage negotiations, actually on negotiation techniques. But the author, Chris Voss, was um, a law enforcement hostage negotiator, and a lot of this is applicable to parenting. There's a technique he talks about called the accusation audit, that when you're going to talk to somebody, 
a way to kind of diffuse tension and get you both to a place where you can be more rational is to either apologize for something or acknowledge that you know you were wrong. I was wrong. You're right. That's and actually that those phrases do like wonderful things for diffusing uh, otherwise kind of bellicose belligerent interactions. Just saying, admitting that either you're wrong, the other person is right, especially that, the latter, you're right. The other person will most of the time almost automatically become diffused because they feel acknowledged and seen and validated. And that is a very powerful technique to use in parenting. So that is what I wanted to talk about today. I hope that information is helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, things you would like to hear more about, please leave them in the comments. And if you have not checked it out already, I, I have a video on how to parent your Capricorn child and another one on how to parent your Capricorn moon child. So please uh, check those out. Thank you for your attention and I will be back soon.